Well, today is the day that we undertake this Howard reduction gear installation on my Ford 8N tractor. I'm excited but nervous at the same time because this is something I've never undertaken before. Uh, so far we're doing well. Like I showed you in the previous video, the tractor was uh, split in half. I got some assistance with that because obviously that's not something you want to do by yourself if you can get some help. It's definitely a lot safer to do. But we're gonna start doing this step by step and I'm gonna try to include you all in the process so you can see how this goes together. So stand by and bear with me. All right, according to the instructions, the first step is to remove this uh, carrier and the shims that are behind it, which we wanna make sure that we save for putting things back into place. Okay, we removed the four bolts from the top um, obviously because of clearance issues with the bottom piece there, um, we can't remove the thing all the way off the top cap there. So the next step in the process is of course, removing that bottom set there according to the directions. Okay, I removed the uh, PTO carrier assembly is what I'll call it for lack of a better uh, explanation of what it is. This is the one that was mounted on the tractor this is the one that needs to take its place in order to, for the Howard to work properly. You can see the difference here. This has the um, mount right up at the top here. This one does not. Now, the one I got from the individual that sold me the Howard um, is fully assembled. So technically I don't need to take these parts and put it into here like what originally would have been done for their initial installation because I got all the internal parts with it. However, looking at some of these parts, I think some of the parts in my old unit look a little bit better. You can see some scoring and stuff like that here. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it will work. He didn't sell me a piece of crap, <laughs> but I just want to be safe. So I'm going to take some of the newer and better looking components out of this one and put it in this one. Now I did look at the race here on this one, the one that he gave me, it looks good. It looks like no issues there. Mine looks the same. So I'll probably, instead of having to pop the race out, I'll keep the race in. I'm just gonna switch some of the internal components um, from this one to this one. And part of that is popping this uh, ring out here. I was able to do it on his, and I'm getting ready to do it on the other one right now. Okay, so I swapped out the internals on both of them. Um, I didn't swap out all the parts, just the parts that looked like they were a little bit better shapes. So in other words, I combined the two to make one uh, good one out of the out of the uh, bearings and races and everything so now we're going to install this lower unit back onto the tractor um, and make sure we shim it and check the bearings uh, preload after we put it on i got the lower pta pto casing in place um, the shims that were on it before on the old casing were seemed to be appropriate for replacing this casing. I figured that would be the case, but we still checked it out. Probably wondering why I have a rusty PTO shaft here. Um, a while ago, I had replaced the PTO shaft because the shaft was worn real bad and the seal was bad. So I replaced the whole unit. This is the old one. And I cut it off with my bandsaw and used it for checking the bearing preload because it really was difficult to get a little pressure on here to spin that bearing. So, and, and I wanted to get an accurate feel to make sure the preload was right. So I was able to put this in there and it spins really good. Of course it doesn't right now because the clutch is not engaged. So it's going right to the engine. But um, when I push the clutch in, this thing spins appropriately and the preload seems just about right, similar to what it was before. So now on to the next step. Okay, the next part was to the carrier that was on here before taking the bearing and race out, but I didn't need to do that because the, not the bearing and race, just the race out and the, and the collar and um, put it on this. But I already had the collar that came with this already in place and the race was in really good shape. So I put it back on using the same shims that were on here from the other, uh, uh, plate that was holding the, the the race onto the bearing that was right here in the earlier we saw so um, I put that in and then you put a bolt in here the one of the original bolts back in there that was in the, the the cover plate 
and the same with that one. And then um, tighten it down. I tightened it down and then I checked the preload and it's like it was before, about the same amount of tension. Nice free flowing bearings, but not you can't spin it. But you know, it doesn't take a great deal to just turn it. So everything's doing real well with the preload there. Now, what I need to do, according to directions, is drill and tap here and drill and tap down here, right there. I have to drill and tap a hole for those bolts that are just like that to go into. That's gonna be a little tricky. I'm not gonna have that recording while I do it. Um, I'm drilling into the transmission. Um, it's, it's able to be done and it can be done, as you can see by the diagrams and the attached, uh, from the last video, the attached documents that were in the video. So, but I'm gonna put grease on my bit. I wanna make sure I keep as minimum amount of, I wanna keep all the filings on this side of the transmission. I don't want them in the inside. So I'm just gonna baby, baby step my way through so we can do a good job. So we're minimizing any issues that will develop. So that's the next course of action that we're gonna be doing. And like I said, everything is going good here. PTO shifts in and out the way it should, grabs onto the gears. So we're doing really well there. All right, stay tuned. So next is drilling those two holes I mentioned just a, a few seconds ago. And to drill those holes into the casing, you need a 27 64 bit and a half inch by 13 thread per inch tap. Now, this here is the bolt that's gonna be holding it to the transmission. And I wanted to be certain, I always, when working on something like this, I, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So what I did is I drilled a piece of half angle iron, uh, I think it's about a quarter inch or maybe five sixteenths inch angle iron, drilled a hole in a scrap piece uh, with the 2764, then did the half inch tap just to make sure that everything looks good and the bolt's gonna fit in properly. And as you can see, we're good to go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and slowly drill that casing so we can get the uh, metal filings out so they're not ending up in the transmission. But again, this is, I didn't, you don't have to do this, it's just something I do for peace of mind. Make sure everything, my ducks are all lined up in a row before I go drilling something that you really can't undrill. So, all right, on to drilling and tapping our holes. I had to remove that plate in order to tap my holes and make sure I got everything clean. One thing I would say I would do differently um, in the assembly, the instruction said to, to put this bottom PTO piece in and then put that plate on. Hindsight being 2020, I would have not put that on. I would have put the plate on, drilled, tapped my holes. Then if I needed to take that plate off to put this on, I would have. The problem I ran into was when I was tapping this hole right here, I couldn't spin my tap handle around because this was in the way. So I very carefully used an adjustable wrench head on it and kept, kept pressure and just slowly kept working it in and it chased in real good those threads. Had no problem there whatsoever. Um, this would have been in the way too, but this definitely is in the way. The top hole, no problems at all as far as clearance to spin my tap handle around. So if you're going to do it, maybe I suggest you could test fit this bottom here or just wait to put it on, but put the top on. That way you can know where your holes are. In fact, I drilled my holes while the plate was on so I knew my holes were perfectly lined up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put my plate back on, the plate back on here and put my bolts in place. All right, welcome back. Had a few little things I had to address uh, while I was away from the camera. Um, one, everything went together fine. One thing it said in the instructions was to put the spacers and the bolts and the foldover tabs in place. I didn't find any spacers um, and there was a pretty large gap between this thing here and the housing right there where that washer is. I'm assuming there might have been a spacer in there. I could have lost it. I, I don't know. There was, there's probably one for down here and one for up there. Um, I didn't find it and I know we didn't want to be having a dead space or draw, trying to draw it against and it caused a problem. So what I did was I put two washers in there. Now, 
they're thick washers. They were the perfect size to go in there. The problem was they were, they were big in diameter. To get the thicker washer, I had a bigger diameter. And so I had to grind it flat on that one side there. And then also had to do the same thing down here, was grind the one side flat so there was no clearance issues. So I got everything into place. Next, we're gonna put the, assemble the gear, other part of the gearbox onto it, according to the instructions. And so that's what we'll do and we'll come right back. But those are shoot, two little adjustments I had to made, again, make. Again, um, not saying I didn't, the guy didn't give me the pieces, um, but I didn't see them in the box and I could have very well lost them myself. I'm um, sure they weren't very big, but I went through and looked and I figured a, a, a washer would work out really well in this situation. Um, got everything torqued down to specs, um, double checked my preloads. Uh, we're, so we're, we're on the track now. You got a little hiccups here and there, but I'm really taking my time and doing this by the numbers because if I don't, I know me, I'll end up screwing it up even worse, you know, things worse and I'll have to come back and redo things and we don't want to do that. So I guess with age comes a little bit more knowledge and what to do. Also, I clean things up really well. I use brake clean and stuff, vacuum cleaner, brake clean uh, to wipe everything down, get all the bearing surfaces cleaned out. So we don't have any problems with metal filings or anything from the drilling and tapping. So on to the next part. All right, I started recording again to show you our progress so far. Gearbox is put together for the most part. Still have to wire and lock down these big bolts that are right here. Figure out how to wire them down and so they don't basically come loose after they get torqued down. Nothing is torqued yet, it's just everything's in place. And for somebody doing this project, I wanted to share uh, an issue I had so it'll make you simpler, simp simplify things for you. I know it says you on the instructions to make sure that the gears are synchronized as you're putting it together. And here's the problem I ran into. I thought I had them synchronized when I and I had it in low range, which low range is this gear pushed up, excuse me, high range. High range is this gear pushed up into here and engaging this gear internally engages on that gear. And that's a direct drive. So be your normal gear ratios. I put it together, everything went fine. And then I tried to put it in low range, which is sliding this center gear back with the shifter here. And I was unable to get the timing right on these gears, this gear here, and there's another small gear like that down there. So a word to the wise, the best way to do it, I found, is while the unit is separated in half, Put it in low range so all these gears all three gears this one this one and the one below are all meshed put it together and then this gear will line up perfectly with that one of course this gear this gear and this gear also have to be meshed up so basically the moral of the story is put it in low range which is all three these gears back and those three gears will all be front which they always stay that way assemble it making sure that everything's these gears are are matched up with this gear get it bolted down then see you should be able to kick it right in the low range or excuse me high range and, and the gears will mesh that's what they mean by making sure all the gears mesh as you're putting it together otherwise you'll have problems so that's why it's good to check the shifting and everything before you go putting everything back together or you'll have yourself a major problem so i just wanted to share so far sorry i'm going to button this up a little bit more got everything torqued down Got the bolts wired up. There's a little bolt that goes in here that has little holes in the head. And it's got, a, um, on this side, let me show you here, has a tab right there. That kind of, that tab goes in that hole to keep it from spinning. And then you tighten it down. It didn't have a lock washer, but I put one on it just to be safe. There was plenty of length in the bolt there. And then I wire the bolts together, that bolt to that little bolt there. And that little tab there is to kind of keep that bearing from walking out. Talk to the guy that, that uh, sold it to me and that's what he said that's there for. And I only had one tab, I may have lost the other one. He and I were talking and he said, you know, you could really just put a washer on it. Cause it's not really taking a load, it's just to keep it from walking, you know, the bearing from walking back out. So put a lock washer and a washer on there, torqued it down really good and then wired these bolts together. And then of course the same for the other side. So for now, um, the insulation is complete temporarily for me. 
I have to do some work on my hydraulic pump and um, also want to do some top top cover work on it too. There's some issues going on there. But today my goal was to get this bad boy strapped into place. And I was nervous doing it because I know these are hard to come by and I didn't want to screw something up, break something. Um, I didn't want to break my tractor. Um, it means a lot to me. And this whole setup is coming together really well. And I wanted to give you guys a little bit of play by play and some things that I noticed here. Um, things that, you know, to get put together. One thing I wanted to mention also is here is down here. You want to make sure you get your PTO shaft, uh, this, this shifter here, because it takes the place of the other one. You want to make sure that that fork is in the proper groove in there. And so that way you can kick the PTO in and out. Because once you put this track to get together, I don't think you want to go ahead and split it again. So everything is in place. I'll probably do a little bit more cleaning up of the gears and stuff. Um, and a lot of this was kind of like a press. And I don't want to say hammered. Hammered sounds like a bad word, but um, kind of tight fit. If, but you got to make sure things are lined up. But I used, you know, a little dead blow hammer just to give it a little love as it was going in. I wasn't ranking and cranking and beating on it. And obviously you don't beat anything cast. I was tapping on this area here and the other area down here on this side. Just kind of walked it in. And everything's good. Everything's working good. The preload, preload on the bearings feels good. So this project's really coming together. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching this video as far as we have. And um, like I said, we're kind of at a standstill right now. We got It's basically installed at this point. Um, I just have to basically bring the two halves of the tractor together. Let me point this out here to you also. This takes the place... You need this with the Howard gear reduction. This takes the place of this piece right here. This piece was originally in your tractor when you took it apart, and this takes its place. They tell you to put it on the back of the tractor. Right there. So it goes on the back is how they tell you to put it on there to then piece the track, slide the tractor together. Now I have to pull the PTO shaft out the back, drop the pump down and do my work there. But so far, this is the Howard installation. And um, I guess we're gonna call this part two. So this is the end of part two. I really appreciate you guys hanging along for the ride. I hope this video was helpful to many of you guys uh, interested in putting a Howard gear reduction unit in your N series tractor. Again, this is a Ford 8N I'm doing, but it's also the same for the 2N and the 9N. Um, I don't think I saw anybody had a video on how to do this. So I wanted to, to share this with everybody on how to go about um, installing this unit. And the biggest thing I can tell you is take your time. Do not rush. It's, it's going to go together if, it, if you have all the right pieces. And it's better to have it to go together the right way than to break something that you may not be able to replace. So excuse my hands are all greasy mess. I had gloves on for a lot of it, but... Every once in a while, you need a little bit of better dexterity, so you take the uh, rubber gloves off at that point. So, sorry, I have my hand in front of the camera there. But I want to thank you again for hanging on to this video. Uh, if you like this video, I please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more of our videos along this line and other homesteading stuff, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel. And also encourage you to hit the notification button so you get notified of a new video when it comes out. So thanks again for watching. And have a blessed day. And thank you again for watching The Kilted Homesteader.